Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani. I welcome you on Study IQ and uh, this is the 5th January daily news analysis, the Hindu paper analysis and uh, let's discuss the questions that I gave to you yesterday, MCQs uh, regarding the moon. India has sent only one manned mission. No, India has not sent any manned mission till now and it is going to be uh, later and the moon is the densest satellite. No, it is also a no. Moon is the second densest satellite after low of uh, Jupiter. Okay, next is uh, regarding the national company law tribunal it's not a constitutional body it was set up under the uh, act it has a power equivalent to high court no it is not having that power that kind of power and although it's a tribunal but it's not having equivalent power it was established for a bank recapitalization no it is not uh, done for that it, it was done for the uh, disputation resolution uh, the change in change in the management of the companies if uh, liquidation is there if they are not able to pay loans back so stake uh, if stakes are to be sold, all these things are going, all these cases are going under this uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, particular, uh, uh, to this uh, company law tribunal, okay. So that's the thing, that's why the answer is D, none. Third one, vote on account. It is not mentioned in the constitution uh, article because only this thing is mentioned that there will be a cons uh, consolidated fund of India and appropriation would be needed to take money out of this uh, fund of India okay if you are taking fund from contingency fund of India that is given under article 267 then also you need to take money from the fund uh, uh, CFI and then you will need to appropriate that money later okay so no money can be taken out of it only that is mentioned and vote on account as I told you is the money where uh, uh, after this appropriation some money is given to the government for the day-to-day -day expenses and it is not called interim budget it's a different thing that I told you now RBI limits customer liability in fraudulent PPI transactions, PPI transactions, prepaid payment inst instruments. This was uh, asked in an examination and maybe this year again it may be asked because it is of too much of use for us. Okay, It actually, uh, these are the methods that facilitate purchase of goods and services against the value stored on instruments. Okay, what are these instruments you see? smart cards magnetic stripe cards online wallets paper vouchers all these are you go to malls you go to food courts and there they gave you the, these cards and from that card only you make payments and uh, these uh, uh, wallets like paytm wallet airtel wallet and all these are ola wallet these things are there okay so these are prepaid payment instruments you add your money before your transaction okay so that's the thing and regarding that the news came that if uh, uh, somebody is having some kind of fraudulent activity and their money is uh, siphoned off and they are making payments but the payment is not reaching up to the uh, service provider then it is not the mistake of customer if he complains before three days then there will be no liability with the customer if he complains uh, uh, in between three to seven days then maximum uh, liability would be of ten thousand rupees for the customer Okay, if I'm a customer and I'm uh, making a prepaid uh, 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 funded payment through these PPIs and if that amount is not reaching up to the service provider then if I complain before three days I don't I will not be having any kind of liability okay and three to seven days maximum 10,000 liability or the transaction if it is less than 10,000 then that amount would be uh, my liability so that's the thing next there are categories of these prepaid payment instruments Closed system payment instruments. What are these? Like big basket wallet, clear trip wallet. Okay, these are the closed system payments. That means uh, when you are adding money into these wallets, you can only purchase their items, not any other company's items. Their items are sold by these cards. Okay, so these are closed system payments. Semi closed, just like the Mobiquick, Paytm wallet, Oxygen wallet. Uh, there, you are able to make payments for other services but you cannot uh, withdraw any money out of atm or something like that that is not possible semi open system are uh, just like uh, semi closed system a, a simple and very technical difference is there open system payment instruments these are visa mastercard rupees they issue cards and all and you can withdraw money also uh, with these cards so these are open ended open system payment instruments but they are also prepaid payment instruments if you don't have money in your account then you cannot withdraw money so that's the thing and mobile uh, prepaid instruments you buy value added services uh, by uh, buying the 
prepaid cards from your service provider companies uh, these uh, jio airtel all these companies are providing that so that's the mobile prepaid instruments and the eligibility if you talk about now banks and nbfcs okay who comply with the eligibility criteria would be permitted to issue all the categories of prepaid payment instruments all the categories so banks are allowed all the all these categories all five categories okay all these five categories other banks permitted to provide mobile banking sorry uh, only banks mobile banking is a phenomena okay you have apps and all in your mobile and uh, you make mobile bank uh, you use mobile banking and make payments out of it so only banks are permitted to do the, to do, uh, do that not any other uh, entities other entities they will be permitted to issue only closed system prepaid payment that means you add money in their wallet and you are only able to buy their products okay and the mobile service providers are permitted to issue mobile prepaid value okay that we buy uh, uh, we do recharges for our phones so that one is uh, going into our accounts only now next news is women mps push for quota they say that even in parliament and assemblies we pass bills we make laws we amend laws and only men are making decisions for women i think it is absolutely unfair because our voices are not heard that's a, a thing to be discussed because it is the matter of gender equality and women members in the rajya sabha on uh, she said that as the government to ensure the passage of the women's reservation bill this bill was actually passed in rajya sabha in 2010 only okay but it is still hanging in lok sabha it was not passed in lok sabha so 33 reservation percent reservation is needed here in, uh, in the uh, lok sabha rajya sabha member of parliaments uh, elections and the state legislature state assemblies so in both the places 33 reservation is needed and this is the 108th amendment bill it is also called women's Reser reservation bill okay next is the news is regarding the data protection law finalized our minister of communication the his uh, minister of law i think said regarding this thing that data protection laws should be uh, ready for india and these data processing these manipulations whatever are being done by these companies uh, these youtube google whatsapp they uh, they have a lot of datas okay they are interactive and they are processing these datas and they are developing their artificial intelligence systems out of these datas okay so these data centers should be there in india only okay so that we would have governance here okay so if i say Uh, when uh, these datas when uh, we are even we are moving our fingers on our mobile that data is taken by these companies okay so the governance the issue the controlling all these things are there with these companies and their offices and their laws they are somewhere else they are not in india so regarding this data protection law minister said that it should be here in india and that's why he compared google to the east india company that we are moving towards a neo imperialism kind of a thing okay because we are heavily dependent on these uh, datas and these companies and they are processing these datas and uh, one more thing was very very important regarding the electronic banking frauds which were highest in the 2017 18 period and uh, here also this issue is involved so the data protection law is finalized now and that should be there in india okay that's very very important next news is regarding the petroglyphs which were found in the kurnool district of andhra pradesh Uh, these petroglyphs are very very important south india was uh, having a character of megaliths uh, during the uh, uh, this uh, uh, vedic time and all okay two places mekala benchi near aspari and kadanathi both are in kurnool district okay there these petroglyphs are found and uh, rock carving dating back from neolithic to the megalithic period neolithic period was uh, uh, from uh, 6000 or 7000 bc till indus valley civilization started around 5 to 4 uh, to 3000 bcs this was the period of neolithic phase okay it is generally disputed because it's not a fixed uh, range but general term we call this phase as a neolithic phase after that the megalithic phase started in south india megalithic means big stones were used and microlith means uh, small stones and their instruments their weapons were uh, created out of flint stones and all okay so those were microliths and they were prevalent in the northern part of india 
indo gangetic plains and all and megalith were in southern part of india this is the area kurnool district uh, spari and this is the karnataka border this is telangana border and this is the area in andhra pradesh so that's the location next is india is key to intel data center growth why intel say that you must have uh, seen the advertisement from the intel company all over the uh, websites facebook and uh, any website you open they say that take our artificial intelligence softwares upgrade your systems and this is going to help you a lot these are the very big companies they are having huge amount of uh, uh, investment in the artificial intelligence uh and, and data mining big data these technologies they are actually investing them uh, in them a lot okay and what they are doing they are actually process, process, processing the maximum amount of data which ever is present in the world okay because they are working with the uh, intelligent machines and these machines are learning machine learning is the phenomena and how the machine is going to learn it is going to learn when it is going to process maximum number of datas okay so it needs data so india is accessing a lot of uh, huge amount of data then uh, this data is going to be uh, beneficial for these artificial intelligence technologies for these companies okay big companies so that's why they say that india is key to intel data center growth and uh, rising adoption of tech such as artificial intelligence data analytics and clouds and uh, these technologies we are also using so it is going to be very very helpful for uh, growth of these kind of of companies because they are the providers okay they are developing the, developing these technologies and they are also doing these data mining and all okay so that's that's how it's a kind of a mutual thing and uh, this is the future actually so you should be update, updated about these informations and upsc is also focusing on these areas so don't take upsc as a conventional uh, body next news is regarding the sebi sebi tweaks norms for the commodity exchanges commodity exchange means uh, you must have heard about the stock market where these uh, uh, stakes and these securities they are exchanged they are uh, traded on the uh, uh, ex exchanges just like the bac nse just like them commodities are also traded on the commodity exchanges you must have heard about the mcx okay that's a commodity exchange and what are the commodities maybe agricultural commodities maybe uh, uh, gold silver these are commodities okay and they are exchanged in the agricultural field this is a kind of a very innovative solution where uh, you fix a forward contract and you decide a, a unit price for these crops and these are exchanged okay on these exchanges so sebi is actually tweaking some norms for these commodity exchanges so they may ask you regarding the commodity exchange or some important data which are which are necessarily very very important so upsc may ask question regarding that and uh, next news is regarding the ecom clarification adds to confusion if you uh, saw my uh, yesterday's pib analysis then i discussed this issue of b2b uh, transaction market based companies and the b2c uh, companies which are invention based platforms okay what are these we were talking about the fdi fdi is allowed in the b2b business what is b2b b2b means uh, where business to business uh, interaction is happening you see i gave you the example of flipkart amazon these websites okay they are a, just a technical platform they are these are the websites they are not selling their own things they are selling some other sellers things to you you are ordering on the flipkart and you are getting your uh, package delivered by flipkart but that product is not sold by flipkart it is sold by somewhere uh, some other company so it's a b2b business just a second so b2c is invention based model where the platform digital platform or the website is owned by the producer of any uh, uh, a particular kind of production maybe a textile com textile company uh, automobile company electronics company if they are producing something they are manufacturing something and they create their own platform and they are selling it so it's the invention based b2c model and in this fdi is not allowed in this fdi is allowed so this was the clarification given by the ministry but they say that it's so complex a thing and these are so complex issues about the products some uh, sometimes they are privately labeled uh, products some are sponsoring them some are uh, some have taken uh, some of their rights okay so they are selling so these are very complex issues 
so this clarification is actually adding more confusion in this area this is the news so this was the uh, pib's slide that i discussed yesterday okay so here this is given what is the market base and what what is inventory based model next news that we discussed yesterday chinese lunar rover change that is renamed as yutu 2 you to do okay and some other informations which are uh, relatable which are very very important with china that china just started worldwide service last month of its own baidu navigation system the way gps is there with the usa okay and we have also developed our navic that is based on irnss 7 uh, uh, satellites constellation okay satellites con constellation is there in the sky and that is giving us a kind of a gps system okay gps is the most famous form that's why we call it normally gps but actually gps is of uh, usa's so china's is baidu and it's uh, it has started its process now next year china plans to launch its mars explorer mission also next year so china is taking big leaps in its uh, space endeavors in 2022 it hopes to complete its own earth orbiting space station and the name i think is tian uh, hai uh, something like that the name is there but it is it is going to be uh, china's own international space station the way nasa has own, uh, its own okay so it is going to be a huge thing and now it has become like a space cold war between china and usa okay you see here already the trade wars are going on and now it is going to be the outer space cold war cold war was the, uh, was there between the united states of america and the ussr bef uh, before the disintegration of ussr in 1991 so after the world war 2 until 90s the cold war was there not direct confrontation but everything is against each other so that was the cold war now the main rivalries are china and uh, usa so that's the thing and now some articles we are going to discuss this is the political article totally not important for examination but from the social point of view you may uh, read it and you can uh, bring some ideas here we are we are going to discuss three articles today the global slowdown left out abused and the article on afghanistan now left out and abused what is that child care institutions in india have been trapped in an administrative blind spot blind spot means they are not focusing on this issue it's a very very serious issue where revelations are there that sexual abuse of inmates in the balika grah at muzaffarpur this was the incident in bihar where some powerful person was running this uh, institution child care institution and all these girls all the girls there they were sexually exploited this was the shocking revelation happened last year and a home meant to protect girls rescued from exploitation itself turned into a den of predation okay they were predated and the shocking rot in the management of such shelters has now been reported by central government committee so one committee has given its report now it's a great recognition by the government side that they are recognizing uh, recognizing this thing because this thing is always always uh, uh, raised by ngos and civil activists and all and they are always scared of these goons and powerful people who are actually involved in these wrong activities and these are very very scary things for the poor kids uh, uh, weak groups of women uh, and girls and they are always hounded they are always predated by these powerful people so that's why it is a very difficult thing to control but now government committee is uh, uh, doing these revelations and they are accepting this thing so it's a great step now what needs to be done here reform of this depressing system as the ministry of women and child development seeks can be achieved only through systematic scrutiny by state government if that is not possible this thing is not going to be contained uh, in the near future now this could be done by appointing special officers who whose task it would be to ensure that all institutions register under J, uh, juvenile justice act the act came in 2015 and it's going to be a very very important act juvenile justice board is there and it may give recognition these all entities should be registered under this act so that all kind of protection all kind of recognition can be there and reporting monitoring can be done with these institutions otherwise they are uh, uh, running like isolated entities no uh, where people know about them but they don't report about these issues and poor kids they are hounded there next the priority should be to bring about uniformity of standard and procedures when you are going to register these uh, institutions then certainly the uniformity of standard would come 
नेक्स्ट इज ग्लोबल स्लो डाउन अगेन आफ्टर टू थाउजेंड एट रिसेशन दिस सिचुएशन इज राइजिंग दैट देर इज अ बिग फियर दैट ग्राइंडिंग हॉल्ट इन द नियर फ्यूचर कैन बी देयर इन द वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी there can be a global slowdown and this time india will not be spared in 2008 uh, crisis the recession india was spared because india's banking system was very robust at that time and our world sh- uh, share in the trade was not that much high which is today very very high and you see uh, the international situations are already affecting us a lot and uh, you see many believe that a recession is overdue now so it's kind of a scary thing because world order is disturbed and trade wars these things are going on which are hampering the progress and already uh, the countries like japan who even went till the uh, steps of negative growth rate uh, negative interest rate what is negative interest rate when you are not paying any interest uh, they are it's uh, themselves giving you loan that take loan go to market and buy something okay and even they are uh, paying interest on that thing so it's a kind of an believable thing but in economy it needs to be done when situation is are so bleak and growth is so low and economy is totally uh, depressed when then we need to push the economy governments need to push the economy so that time these issues like expansionary measure Uh, helicopter money issue uh, what is helicopter money when uh, it's a total recession time totally depressing time no jobs no money with people and no demand in the market no production is there no jobs so it's a vicious cycle then government need to come in and they will uh, need to give money to people anyhow maybe it's a seventh pay commission maybe some kind of a scheme maybe some kind of cash transfer so that people will go into into the market and they will buy something and this cycle will uh, push again and uh, when they are going to buy the uh, things then more production would come demand and supply will be robust and tax collection would rise for the government and this how the economy is going to be uh, robust again so this is a kind of a cycle but out of the uh, two bringing Uh, economy from this vicious cycle towards a, uh, a working cycle it's a great uh, deal of effort by the government and t- at that time expansionary measures are taken and when expansionary measures are taken you lower the interest rate okay when recession is there in the economy you need to lower the interest rate because at that time nobody will be uh, dare to uh, go to bank and take loan if interest rates are high okay so interest rates needs to be go down at that time but already after 2008 we did not recover as a world whole world did not recover and uh, interest rates are already down and now a different scare a next scare of the global halt global slow down is haunting us that it's a complex situation uh, the uh, the fedex the, the federal reserve interest rates they were rising after a long long time or long many many years but again the situation is like that that demand is not improving the markets are not improving and again the push is towards interest rate going down okay but now what needs to be done consistently you cannot keep your interest rate down otherwise it would be a huge problem if consistently on loans you, you are not getting any kind of interest rate then banks are going to fail governments are going to fail if they are not earning any interest so for the long period of time you cannot keep your interest rate very low so now this situation is also there this challenge is already there and now the different situation is uh, uh, rising that where global slowdown is again coming so again you will need to Uh, lower your interest rates so it is going to be a complex situation so this is the fear and uh, after years of adopting monetary policy regime ma- marked by near zero interest rates central banks like the fed now have very little room to lower rate if they want to fight the recession because to fight the recession they need to lower the rates but already they are uh, uh, having low rates okay so that's the thing the next recession may thus witness central banks adopting even more unconventional methods to stimulate their economy so these kind of steps we may see in the future okay and it is going to be a, a, a funny situation where both kinds of challenges are there challenges are there they need to uh, raise the interest rate to survive and they also need to lower the interest rate to fight the recession so both kind of things are there and why this is erupting because recession is not the recession situation is not improving and demand is not improving market is not improving trade is not improving that's why uh, again the scare of global slowdown is erupting 
now you read all these points in the text you will get the pdf i have uploaded on the uh, telegram group and i will also upload on my facebook group amit sani is preparation is the group where i daily upload these pdfs okay so it will be easy for you people to understand this next article after the inevitable exit what is this inevitable exit usa is consistently present and fighting the situation of afghanistan for the last 18 years okay but still after 18 years and after uh, spending millions of trillions of dollars it is in a situation where the respectful peaceful exit is not possible and the groups that it targeted the taliban haqqani network they are much more powerful today they have become a great entity now and they are politically also very very powerful today more powerful than the afghanistan government then it's a, a situation where they are uh, having no option except dealing with the taliban directly ignoring the afghanistan government the envoy from america uh, they are meeting in qatar with the taliban leaders ignoring the uh, afghanistan government because government is not influential there it is not uh, the uh, government of afghanistan is not even able to conduct the elections properly they conducted elections in october but no result came and uh, next elections are scheduled to be in july but according to constitution they should be there in the month of february or in march but it is not possible that means the government's democratic process is very very weak at uh, uh, at this time and this was the aim of the us policy that afghan led policy should be there democratic values should be established and government should uh, become very powerful but the just opposite happened pakistan did not support uh, uss idea even after uh, us spending trillions of dollars on pakistan it had given it a lot of money but still pakistan has not given any positive results to usa and that's why usa is totally miffed with pakistan it has threatened it to uh, hurt the what uh, the supply of, of the some products and the money it is it was giving to pakistan that they are going to stop it these all line of credit they are going to stop and that's why pakistan's condition is uh, becoming very very serious now they are having all kinds of fund crunches all kinds of budget cuts and all all these things are going on because america is no more supporting pakistan because in a way pakistan betrayed us's idea when us said that these groups are there you see the location of afghanistan afghanistan is a landlocked country and this is pakistan haqqani network taliban network these are the areas where they were influential and usa consistently gave aid to pakistan gave money to pakistan so that pakistan would be able to control them and us dominance and influence would be maintained in this area and things should would go according to the uss wish but this is not possible after 18 years pakistan's situation is more troubled and it was not able to control all these uh, uh, terror groups actually it strengthened them so that is the situation where us is totally miffed with pakistan but the situation with india is very very complex here what is the complexity that we will uh, discuss here the core seems set for a thinning of american presence in afghanistan they have decided that that they will pull out all the troops Trump's keen to bring back most, if not all, troops before his re-election in 2020. Because his election was in 2016. Before that, also in the campaigning, he said that I will withdraw all the troops. I will not burden America with the uh, trillions of dollars which are being spent in Afghanistan. There is no meaning. We will pull out from there and we will uh, establish a democratic government there. But this thing could not happen. Obama also tried to withdraw all these troops in 2010, but this, that was not possible. And after that situations, they uh, somewhat went out of hand when these terror groups and all, they started networking with each other and they became, they spread, they became very, very strong. And today the situation uh, like that, that America's envoys, they are meeting separately with Taliban to settle the issue because the peaceful exit is totally uh, impossible and it is becoming an insult for America suggested that regional players like Russia, India and Pakistan should be more involved in stabilizing the situation and mocked India for not doing enough. 
first we had two plus two dialogue where we saw that total domination uh, is there from the america side america made us alive but it is totally showing like this it's a big brother attitude okay and now uh, trump mocked modi that uh, he is consistently saying me that we have uh, constructed library in afghanistan library in, uh, in afghanistan and it's not it's nothing we are actually spending more than uh, whatever you are spending in just five days whatever you have spent till now in afghanistan so that's the mockery and we all have uh, actually denied the statement we all have criticized uh, trump for making this kind of statement so that's the thing india must be prepared for the potential consequence of withdrawal of american troops this is the true situation because american troops withdrawal is necessary now and it is inevitable and india should take this situation like this only that it would be inevitable and it, it they will go so how this region is going to be stabilized so there india can play a big role but that policy should be there of india's only india should not follow america's policy or india should not do something if america says uh, it to do there america is totally uh, uh, demanding this support from india because pakistan is not supporting america and it is saying that Pakistan is totally ineffective there, but India should play a major role. And you see, this is Iran. Here we are uh, developing the Chabahar port, Gwadar port is developed by China. Here in Balochistan and Pakistan, it is in Chabahar is in Iran. Okay, so we were uh, importing uh, oil and all from uh, Iran, and we needed a waiver from America. So um, America gave us waiver for this Chabahar port and the uh, oil deal also. Because, uh, but the condition what was the condition condition was that you play a positive role in afghanistan so that this situation can be managed because peaceful exit e exit is not possible for us and it's kind of a big insult for america uh, uh, like big country okay and uh, if this insult happens for america it nothing can be worse than that after 18 years of struggle this you get in the world scenario and being the biggest nation in the world then nothing can be worse than that so that's why it america is all keen to get the india's support because india is having a good relationship with afghanistan and afghanistan also demands um, uh, india's support so that's why it's a uh, complex situation for india also okay now see uh, when i told you that afghanistan is a landlocked country i show you a picture before that and uh, uh, the Jahidan is in Iran, uh, Jaranj is in Afghanistan, Dilaram is in Afghanistan. We were developing a highway here. Uh, this port was developed. India invested a lot here. And uh, Iran being an adversary to USA. USA has put all the sanctions, um, uh, economic sanctions on Iran again. Uh, Trump withdrew from the Iran, uh, Iran nuclear deal also. So he, right now he is applying the Katsa here. Katsa is the main act against the adversaries of USA. So if somebody is dealing with the adversaries of USA, we are dealing with Iran, that means we are dealing with the adversary of Iran. Uh, Iran. So America may apply this card on us also, but still he is giving waiver so that India will not be mixed with uh, USA and it will support its steps in Afghanistan and India will play a positive role here in Afghanistan. USA wants this thing. But you see, uh, Mr. Mattis was there and Mr. Mattis hard, had pushed most strenuously to keep India in the Afghan game by swinging a waiver for India on Chabahar and Iran oil. But now Mattis is out of the game. He has resigned. Okay. And uh, Afghanistan is becoming tough with Pakistan. A lot of things are going on. Recently, we saw the attacks happen in Afghanistan and government is totally failure. Mr. But now Mr. Ghani, the president, appointed two aides of former president Hamid Karzai known for their uh, hardline position on the Taliban and Pakistan as his defense and interior ministers. So that means Afghanistan is also taking uh, a tough stand again against Pakistan and USA is also taking tough stand against Pakistan. So they all are pressurizing Pakistan to uh, do something in this area and both things they are trying. Trump is writing friendship letter, uh, Trump is writing thanking letter to Imran Khan that you supported here uh, my idea and uh, before that, they were putting all economic sanctions and they were stopping the aid to Pakistan. So both think they are trying to pressurize Pakistan. So that that is the situation. And as I told you, turmoil is going on in Afghan polity, uncertainty of the democratic process, parliamentary elections held in October, but even their preliminary result haven't yet been declared. Okay. 
and presidential elections have been postponed till July despite constitutional clause. Uh, they should have been completed by March month, but it is not possible. For India, these developments may appear discouraging, but a more pragmatic view is necessary to, to deal with all possible outcomes. We must be ready for the US's eventual pullout as Afghanistan's peacekeeper is inevitable that this kind of situation has been developed and New Delhi was caught off guard in 2010 also when uh, uh, Obama declared that we will withdraw the troops so at that time we were also ignored in a way because at that time Pakistan was the ally of USA but today Pakistan is not today India has become the ally and USA is pressurizing India to take part in this process because he knows India is a big country is the leader of the uh, South Asian region and they are having big military power so India may help a lot but India cannot uh, go blindly there because a lot of situations are there it's a complex situation terror groups are there we are having situation of Kashmir so we need to be very very careful in uh, putting our hand to Afghan situation but we may work with the collaboration with the positive efforts with the investment uh, uh, steps we may move but we cannot move military wise that the USA wants Mr. Trump's administration welcome India's investment in Afghanistan but its symptomatic desire to pare down Pax Americana in every part of the world what is Pax Americana that means you America wants that India comes and help us and we will take the credit that in America is the biggest country America has settled all these issues and uh, because we are alive with uh, we are we have made ally India and India is happy uh, in becoming the ally of uh, America uh, like big country and uh, this is how situations are managed America India would help and America will win the situation so this is the Pax Americana issue okay in every part of the world USA does like that it plays the big brother role and it wants the hegemony but the situation in, in Afghanistan is very very complex so that's why uh, uh, Trump's, uh, Trump and its administration and uh, his envoys and all they are totally under immense pressure and the condition is put on the envoy uh, uh, one person uh, Trump has sent to settle the situation as soon as possible and he has uh, given him the uh, condition of six months that, that within six months you solve this issue otherwise we are going to pull out all these troops and there may be an insulting situation for America and uh, that's the thing now the regional instability is also rising leaving Syria to Iran and its allies when America declared that we will pull out our forces and we will be out of the Syria situation then Iran who has become the main adversary of USA today Iran is uh, coming to Syria and uh, its allies are coming so Syria is in hands of Iran now Yemen to Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia uh, uh, is totally fighting uh, proxy war with Iran in Yemen Yemen is totally uh, uh, devastated and uh, Saudi Arabia is a Sunni country, Iran is a Shia country and the fight is there with between Shia and Sunni nations, the Hezbollah group which is supported by Iran and that is fighting the Saudi led forces in Yemen and Saudi Arabia is given military aid, not military aid but uh, uh, all the arms and all these things are given by America to Saudi Arabia to fight with Iran indirectly. So that's the thing that is going on. So this area is totally disturbed and Afghanistan, if they are going to withdraw all the uh, troops, America, then Afghanistan to players like Russia, Pakistan and Iran, Afghanistan will go in their hands and Pakistan is already in hands of China. So this situation is going to be totally complex. And with respect to India, it is becoming a very, very uh, bizarre and complex situation. So India need to go with ultimate level of patience ultimate level of uh, intelligence diplomacy all these things are going on and we need to balance the russia and america situation also so some other hard truths must be faced india cannot replace pakistan's position geographically nor can it ever offer the us or any other force what pakistan has offered in the past means uh, pakistan Pakistan's land was also bound by USA and uh, USA totally dominated the territory of Pakistan we cannot allow that kind of thing and the decision to abandon the, abandon the SARC may have provided some short-lived returns in isolating Pakistan but it has had the effect of cutting Afghanistan loose from India's leadership of South Asia as well that means these things are going on that we are not att attending SARC Islam we are not going to Islamabad and we are totally trying to isolate Pakistan in a lot of uh, uh, areas but these things are not going to help in a longer 
uh, way where we are uh, dealing with all these big situations situations like Afghanistan are uh, part here the relations between USA and India these things are not going to help help by these small issues of isolating Pakistan so that's the thing and India's best course with Afghanistan remains its own regional strategy we should go by our own regional strategy in the in, the, in this area okay Finally, it is necessary to recognize the cyclical nature of interventions in Afghanistan, which has been called the graveyard of empires throughout the history. Even in the colonial time, uh, these uh, fighters, they said about Afghanistan that, that it's a graveyard of empire and empires, whoever comes here because the geographical location is the most unfortunate thing about pa Afghanistan. You see, it's a landlocked country during the colonial time also, Russia and Britain. They both were having fights here. They both were uh, very much wary of each other because colonial expansions were going on. And during the Cold War time also, Russia was having conflict here with America. America uh, gave support to all these uh, terror groups here. America actually established the, these terror groups here so that they can fight with Russia. So during the Cold War time, 70s, when this oil and all these things were found in this Middle East, Middle East area. So at that time, USA uh, was fighting a proxy war with the help of these terror groups, which are uh, becoming uh, the Al Qaeda, Taliban and all these areas, all these terror groups. They were raised by America. OK, uh, uh, Laden was the classmate of George Bush at that time uh, in, in the past. So these actually uh, things are done by USA only. Now USA is caught in its own fire. So that's the situation, very complex situation. And a lot can be discussed in this area. This is the most important issue of international relations. So we have a foundation of time. So I'm going to conclude this now. And uh, some vocab MCQs, you try to answer them. And the mains answer uh, writing question is also based on this Afghanistan situation. Okay, so listen, all these things, whatever I ha have said, uh, patiently and you will get the pdf join the group amit sani group for is preparation you will get the pdf there if you are not on the telegram uh, study iq telegram group is there there also this these pdfs are there and uh, one blog and one web website of study iq is there there also these pdfs are daily uploaded for the pib in the evening and for the uh, the hindu analysis in the morning so thanks a lot keep watching it was amit sani and i know it's a foundation a lot of things are to be discussed so that's the problem with these videos informations are too much so thanks a lot 